all right hey we're back so we're talking about population and migration this is unit two um and i am miss v and now we're gonna get into population density so before we talked about population distribution so now we're gonna get into population density and talk more about what that is all right so let's continue all right so before we I was able to identify the factors that influence the distribution of human populations at different scales when we talked about population distribution and different meanings and so forth attributed to population distribution now our next stop is to define the methods geographers use to calculate population density so we're going to understand what population density is and then find out the methods and define those methods that geographers use so that they can calculate it okay so let's continue so that's your challenge all right so population density basically is another tool that geogra geographers use to study population distribution okay and density is just simply the number of people um in a particular area of land okay just looking at how many people occupy that space on the land okay all right so population density can be computed in three ways for a particular place okay you have arithmetic density physiological density and agricultural density arithmetic density is pretty much the same thing as population density okay it's the total number of people by the total and land area so for example if the land area is just one um square and that square was one kilometers or one mile right and let's say that the dots represent people if those are 10 dots on that piece of land then we can say that the population density is 10 people per one square mile so we can say that based on in the picture that 10 people there are 10 people per square mile or in this case in the picture is kilometers right but arithmetic density can be slightly misleading for example in Egypt the arithmetic density is 201 pe person or people per square mile however the physiologic density is 5,717, right, per square mile, which means that 985 of the people of Egypt live on only 3% of the land. So what do you think? Like, if it looks sort of like this. Why is it that only a certain amount of people are living on a small amount of space? Give me your thoughts in um, in your Ed Puzzle or in the comments. I would love to see what your thoughts are about that. All right, so here's an example of population density. Okay, a street in Hong Kong. This is a street in Hong Kong, and it's one of the most densely populated places in the world. This is Hong Kong, China. So as you see here, there's a lot of people um, in this street compared to maybe where you would say in your neighborhood where it's not that many people walking um, along the street. Or it depends, if you live in New York City, there will probably be a lot of people walking on the sidewalks on the street, right? So it all depends on where you live and the amount of people that occupy that particular place, right? However, this is a different story like a street in Ulan Bator, Mongolia, which is one of the least densely populated places in the world. And as you see here, this is just one guy walking down a path, right? So again, those are the differences of showing um, a very densely populated area or place rather and versus a least densely populated place. So you can see the difference in picture of um, what population density really looks like, right? All right, so physiological density is the number of people per unit of areable land. Areable here means farmable, or you're able to grow 
crops or at, you have agricultural output okay and it's basically helpful for geographers to be able to analyze the amount of farmland or land that can grow crops that is available in that particular region or in that place right so the higher the physiological density then the more pressure it is on that particular region to supply sufficient food for the society okay so let's think back a little bit on the question i asked you about egypt if there's 985 people which occupies three percent of the the land it's probably because of the physiological density which means that it's pretty um pretty low why because possibly in Egypt there is the Sahara Desert and there's maybe merit a lot of desert area and with that desert area there's not a lot of places to be able to grow crops because there's no water to sustain it right so because there's no water to sustain it of course nobody's going to live there so that's possible that people in Egypt find certain places to live um, where there's um, water so that they can grow crops, right? So there is a prime example about of physiological density and how people live in certain areas, especially where it is to farm, okay? And to grow or to have an agricultural industry. So here we're talking about Egypt again. So in this picture, you tell me, what is the significant um, attribute or, or value here in terms of uh, this place in Luxor, which is Luxor, Egypt? One is near the Nile and one is away from the Nile, a couple of blocks away from the Nile. What makes it stand out here? All right, so if you thought about that and you answered the question, well, you would know that pretty much the thing that makes it stand out is the Nile itself. The water, as you see here, is giving fresh water to the vegetation, which there would allow them to have um, agriculture and grow crops and food. Whereas here, it, it's too dry and there's not much um, to be able to grow crops. So there's probably not that many people that live here, as opposed to those that would live here because it's very fertile and it has a lot of um, potential to grow crops okay so the physiological density here there may be many more people living here than they would be living here okay all right awesome which leads us to agricultural density now agricultural density is the number of farmers per unit of arable land so now we're instead of looking at just people we're looking specifically at the farmers who live on the farmland okay so a very high agricultural density means that farms are actually on each piece of farmland and they're people that are tending to that particular farm okay low agricultural density suggests that usually there's a presence of a larger farm and more mechanized farming technology so what does that mean so if you look at this uh, picture the picture up here has about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five people. So we would say from this picture that there's more people here because they have to farm. They have to farm on the land. Whereas on the bottom, you see only two people, but there may be, um, there may be a mechanic, you know, mechanized farming technology or machines, farming machines to help, um, to help uh, harvest the, the food or the crops that they're growing here. So if there's a low agricultural density, it's more than likely that those particular countries are MDCs because they're able to afford to have um, mechanized farming technology. Whereas those that have a very high agricultural density they are more labor intensive, so they have more workers working the farm rather than having machinery because those countries can't afford it, right? So 
thinking about that, let's try an example, okay? According to this map, which countries have the highest agricultural densities? You tell me. All right, so if you said parts of Africa, the Sub-Saharan Africa and West Africa, and also parts of South Asia and Southeast Asia, then you're absolutely right. That is correct. Based on the map, they have more farmers or they're using the agricultural density to show that there's more farmers in these areas here than on other places, okay? And of course, again, the higher ed agricultural densities, that means that those countries are more than likely least or LDCs or least developed countries because they do not have enough economic output to purchase um, farming equipment or um, uh, farming technology to help lessen the labor load. Okay, awesome. So there's going to be a quick check for those of you that are in my class. There's going to be a quick check through Edpuzzle. I need you to go ahead and make sure that you understand all of this information from this particular video. And now that you've done the quick check, I need you to think of two things that you found interesting for this video and write one question that you may have from this topic. And I will see you in the next video. Perfect.